With this video I want to show you how you can start with Papyrus for Robotics if you have existing ROS2 projects and you don't want to start from scratch. So I will do that with the example of the Navigation 2 stack and the first thing I will do is to import the Navigation 2 stack source code into my Eclipse workspace. So I choose the generic import function I will use the C, C++ option to export, import existing code as a makefile project. Choose here Linux GCC. And I've already uh, the path in my uh, edit buffer. So I finish this import. And now you see here is navigation to workspace. As the source code, it's all the different ROS2 packages, and I will use look at one of these packages in particular, the navigation to AMCL package, and there is a C++ code file uh, for the AMCL node. I can open this one, and you see there are a lot of errors because uh, normally this file is uh, not compiled with. Uh, CDT make files but with CMakeList and package XML as you see here. In order to analyze these files, there is an option in Papyrus for Robotics here, reverse ROS node from C, but it will not work uh, well uh, if I don't import at least some of the uh, standard include files from ROS uh, so that it can be analyzed. So I will go to the project properties and in order to change project properties I have to switch on the option generate make files automatically. Now I can go to the settings and configure and include paths. So even if we are not using uh, the uh, make files from CDT uh, I have to add here an include files so that CDT is able to analyze the files in a better way. So our reverse mechanism is based on Eclipse CDT and of the abstract syntax tree that is passed by Eclipse CDT. So once I have done that, I can now decide to reverse the ROS node from an existing C++ body file. I switch on this option, you see that the reverse is now running. You can look at the progress. Well, now it's finished. And if I look here at my model explorer, uh, package explorer, sorry, I see there is now a new project called NAV2AMCL. You can have a look at uh, the contents and you see there is a models component AMCL node component definition which has been reversed. So if you open the diagram you see here the welcome page of Papyrus and here on the right hand side you see the different uh, views, the different diagrams and you see here the AMCL node diagram. It has been reversed from the AMCL node uh, definition file. So let's look at the diagram. And first you don't see much. Uh, you see uh, just here a property section, but you don't see, for instance, the uh, publishers and subscribers. In Rob Moses, and when we re reversed into a Rob Moses model, these are um, uh, available in form of ports. You don't see the ports yet because this is just a diagram and the diagram does not necessarily show all the contents of the model. So there is this option to show and hide contents. Here you can press F4 and I see there is in fact some additional items, in particular here the border items. That are all the ports that have been reversed from C++ code file. So there is no automatic layout yet if I do this reverse, so I have to uh, replace these ports manually. So for instance, I can, oh, 
I can place the uh, outgoing ports on the right side, the incoming ports on the left side. And now I have uh, analyzed the port. Let's see if the ports do uh, are correctly typed. So, for instance, I can click on the particle cloud. I can go to the property view. There is a port section in this. And what I see here, there is a provided service, which is a post array. And there is the quality of service associated with this port. And uh, I could uh, also have a look at here these uh, parameter settings elements. So here again in the property view, I see the parameter settings and there are the different parameters along with set type, a default value and a description. I can um, see that there are quite a lot of large number of parameters for this component and Indeed, that corresponds what is shown in the file. So here, in the AMCL node, there is the add parameter uh, operation, which defines the default value and a description for these parameters. And uh, it's well a double parameter. So uh, I have a good starting point. No? I've already all the uh, static view of the component is so already there. So I have the uh, interaction points, the ports here, I have the parameters, and I can and further refine this uh, class. Uh, I can add then activities, and the activities can be associated with a certain uh, port can here add an activity port and move this activity port and connect it to the particle cloud. So if I want to generate code from it, I can here call the option generate ROS2 code. The first time I do it, it transforms my project into a CDT project. And this time the CDP project is correctly configured uh, for using Qualcomm as build system. Well, it will just tell me that it will overwrite the re existing build description and start the code generation. Uh, now you see an exception. You see here that there is no activity uh, associated with the initial post requiring a handler. So initial post is indeed uh, an incoming port. Uh, we haven't defined a handler for this port. So a handler is the callback that needs to be executed whenever some data is received on this port. So we would have to complete um, the component by adding uh, additional functions that are defined for each of the incoming ports. And uh, we can do that by using here the activity pane. We can add a new function. And you see by default the function is a handler. I can edit this function. I have to go here to the activity pane. The ID is just giving information about the name. Could have a description. Here, a more interesting part here is uh, that I can decide uh, what kind of function this is. So is it a lifecycle related function that is called on configure, on activate, on so on. Is it periodically called or is it manually called? And I could also have some C++ code associated with it. But there is an additional uh, 
option to also have uh, the generated code as uh, the, the actual code added later on after the generation. So instead of continuing doing that for this model, I will change to a model that I've already prepared. It's a bit simpler component, the navigation to planner. So here I will also open again the model. You see the planner server diagram. And you have here a plan activity. Uh, this plan activity contains two operations, compute plan and publish plan, which are tagged as manually called. Manually called doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, well uh, called by invoked by the user. It means that uh, there are some other functions inside the components that will uh, call it, and this is not part of the generated code. Um, yeah, so let's generate code for the planner server. And it has done so, we can have a look at the generated code. See here in a source gen folder, the code for the planner server has been generated. In addition to that, we have some manual code, an implementation file. And there's also a skeleton that helps us to have this implementation. Because if I look again at this uh, uh, function, compute plan, for instance, I can see, well, there it's a manual call function it's declared here but we don't have any code we have the information the code is not in the model so the code needs to be added on later after the component code is generated so what is generated here is the planner server this file there's the skeleton that has also been generated and here is a manual file so uh, look, let's have a look at the different files. This is the uh, planner server header file. Well, we had some um, parameters. For instance, here this plugin IDs, plugin types that had been automatically generated. Well, I forgot to show you that here on the. Um, on the model level, so there are the two parameters. Of course, there is a plan output port. So we have here this plan, and there is a postfix underscore pub to indicate that this is a publisher port, and the plan corresponds uh, to the uh, port that we have defined on the model level. And there is a server file. That generates uh, uh, the necessarily creation of this publisher. Well, here is a default um, quality of service, and this is a, a lifecycle port, so it's already activated by the generated code. Here is a function that takes care of declaring the parameters, and another function that takes care of initializing the parameters. So we have to provide an implementation in the end. And as a starting point, here is this generated skeleton. There's information in the skeleton that tells you how to, um, yeah, how to use the skeleton as an initial starting point. The generated constructor, and there are prototypes for the functions that we need. Well, in this case, the functions have no parameters because these are just manually function. In case of handlers and callbacks, they automatically have the right signature. Uh, the implementation of course of these functions besides of the constructor is empty. So here I've taken these initial files as a starting point and I've created 
um, than an implementation in which uh, well some of the lifecycle code is present and in particular here the functions come through plan and publish plan uh, are existing. Well, the implementation of these functions is directly copied and pasted um, from the uh, respective function in the original code that we reversed. So if I go back to the navigation to planner, I open the planner server here. And I find it here. And if you compare this code here with the code we have, I have to compare this code here with our manual file. You see underscore impl project. You see that it is exactly the same code uh, except for a different layout.